Hi, I'm Will from Tested. Norm from Tested. It's iOS 5 day, Norman Chan. That's right. October 12th, Apple has finally released iOS 5 for your iPad 2, iPad 1, iPhone 4, and iPhone 3GS, and iPod Touches. That's, that's a lot, a lot of devices. Of, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you did that and not me. Yeah. Uh, so there's nine or ten really amazing features in iOS 5. You know, Apple came out with a list of 200 things. A lot of them are really super minor stuff that you'll mm -hmm. never ever see or use. But we have nine, maybe ten things that we really think are amazing. Let's get right into it, starting with notifications. Mm, this is the big new feature in yeah. iOS 5. We've been using iOS 5 on our devices for quite a while. I've been using it for months now, it seems yeah. like. And notifications is the game changer for iOS, yeah. finally. So if you're it. looking at Android, you, know, you have that pull down menu with you know email notifications, Twitter notifications, calendar updates, all that kind of stuff. Finally, we have that in iOS as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are replacing the old school modal pop-ups, that big square block yep. that would pop up and pretty much break whatever you were doing at any given time. Uh, as you can see on my iPad right now, the only thing I have notifying me are calendar updates. Yep. Uh, but you can jump right in, go straight to the cal calendar entry and see you know, your entire schedule. It takes you right to where you want to be. Whether it's an incoming Twitter message, a calendar update or whatever, they all show up there. Let's, let's take a look at the iPhone stuff as well. Right, on the iPhone, the default is calendar, uh, you get weather, stocks, and messages. Yeah. So text messages, iMessages, but uh, not mail. Missed phone calls. Missed phone calls. Uh, right. Calendar updates, Twitter messages. There's a default weather widget that just pops up there mm -hmm. that tells you what the cur current temperature and weather is where you are, yeah. not, not where you sat. But it uses your geolocation and kind of pulls down and says, okay, you're in San Francisco. Let's get the weather for San Francisco. And you can tap that and see a full uh, hour by hour, five day forecast. So the new notification, notifications menu on the iPad doesn't take up the full screen. On the iPhone, it does it take, does up, take the up the full screen. It does take up the full width, yeah. So not only do you get the pull down menu, you get these new pop ups, new style pop ups. And we yeah. can actually configure that. We'll show it on the, the iPad. But up. And if you actually go to the notifications, here we, there we go. So you can actually choose which apps. Um, so there's three styles. Yes. None. That's pretty good. Yep. I like yep. that one. There's this new banner thing with it kind of rolls over from the top. Yeah. Shows that we can we can do we'll show you one of those in a sec. And then there's the old school alerts, which are the modal notifications mm -hmm. that break. Which are still redesigned though. Uh, yeah, they do look different. They, yeah, they still show, stop what they you're show doing. you what they stop what you're doing. They show you what apps coming from whether it's text message or Twitter, but it's not just the, the yes. boring blue you know circle box. Exactly. So then the other thing, the other option you have to control here is view and lock screen. So what that means is if this no app shows a notification. Is it important enough to show on the on the lock screen? Yeah. I left text messages, phone calls, that kind of stuff on calendar events. I actually turned off email because I get mail too much is off email. by default. Yeah, yeah, it's a good it's a good setting. You don't want to see that all the time. Mm -hmm. um, all this stuff you can get into it real deep. You can show recent you know the number of items you show is configurable. Um, that's pretty much it. And then of course the old stuff like the badge app icons, whether it updates with a number or things like that. Yeah. It, it's it's a huge advancement for iOS, something that I'm really excited about. I've been using it for ages. I can't imagine going back now. And it brings it up on par with Android in terms of notifications at this point. Very, very handy. Doesn't slow down the user interface at all that I could notice. When no, it's in seems, other apps. Fine. Yeah, yeah. It's natively built in. Very good. The next big feature is iMessage. Mm -hmm. uh, this is showing up on all the platforms. It's not just the phone. So you know, we used to have this messages app. It was essentially an SMS client, so you could send SMS and MMS messages. Yeah. Do you remember the original iPhone message logo had SMS in it? Yeah. yeah. They got rid of that. It just looks like the green box with the, the, top, wow. the circle. And then now it's actually also iMessages. Yeah. So when you have your email or phone number set up with iMessages, yes. you can send iMessages to other iOS devices for free. Basically, they're, they're text messages or MMS messages without the carrier being involved. So yeah. they go over your data plan. Uh, they work over Wi-Fi, so even if you don't have a 3G connection, mm -hmm. which means you can use them on devices that don't have Three G connections, so like the iPad one, iPad, iPad two, mm -hmm. uh, iPod Touch, all of those will work. Even your old iPhone, if you're not on, will work. So the way this works is you associate, like Norm said, email addresses and phone numbers with the with iMessage, the service. Yeah. Uh, then Apple knows, hey, you're this guy, you're this phone number. When somebody tries to send you a text, whether they know you're on iMessage or not, it pops up and says, oh, hey, mm -hmm. you should get an iMessage, and then it comes to you across the internet. So for example, if I'm I'm on three G and I want to send you. Uh, a text message yeah. or a message, I open it up, and normally it would be a regular text message, SMS, but because it knows that you're on iMessage, the message is actually blue instead of green now, right. and it automatically converts to an iMessage. There's no option unless I turn off iMessages specifically Entirely. for me to send an SMS to you. Right. And it is push, but I, from my experience, not as fast as an SMS on with full reception. So I've done some testing on the subway with this. Uh, it's definitely a little, it's, it's both better and worse. Yeah. Uh, I found that when you have a decent, even GPRS connection, it will send, like an old school, super slow mm -hmm. wireless connection. It will send. Uh, sometimes it works better than SMS, sometimes it doesn't. I don't have any clear 
thing. It does seem to be a little bit slower. A little though. slower, but it makes, like, if you have an iPad 3G, it makes that very useful because you don't pay yeah. for text messages, but you can have iMessage pretty much anywhere. Well, and you couldn't have a uh, uh, iMessage. You couldn't do SMS on an I iPad 3G. Right, exactly. Yeah. So now uh, you've sent me a message, and if you notice on the screen, yes. it's in blue. You've asked me if I'm ready to talk about This is about coming from an iOS iPad because we, we're doing good capture and here. And right now, I'm just uh, sending you an iMessage, and I'm on Wi-Fi around my phone right now. And it should just go up and immediately oh, pop hell up. Hell yes, there it goes. he is. Okay, now. Pretty instantaneous. Yeah, the neat thing about this is it'll pop up on all your devices. So this just rang on my phone, on my the other iPad we have set up here for other yeah. reasons, all sorts of devices. Everything's at once. right Thing here. Alerts. Norm is ready. Uh, this is both a good thing and a bad thing. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing that I found is that sometimes iMessage gets a little bit out of sync with the server, yeah. and you actually do have to go turn it off and on again. That could just be a beta problem. It may be fixed by the time this is out for everyone to use. Uh, but something to be aware of. I don't know that I trust iMessage the way I trust SMS. Yeah, I, we can show in the menu uh, the settings where you turn off iMessage. Now, for example, if you have an iPad and you have iMessage set, set up with your phone number, your email address, but you have an Android phone, I yeah. can't send you without turning off iMessage, a text message just to your phone. Exactly. It will go default to your iPad yeah, or I iMessages. I think if you're going to migrate away from iOS onto another platform at this point, it's going to add a process that means you have to go into iMessage before you turn off the, the iDevice for the last time and say, yeah. I am not this person anymore. Take mm -hmm. this take this away. Yep. It's a problem they're going to have to solve because you know the other thing that's weird is you can only associate the phone number on the phone. You can't associate a phone number on the iPad. So if you send an iMessage to my cell phone number, I'm not sure whether that is actually going to show up on the iPad and, or the, and, phone. and the iPod Touch. Right. Yeah. And uh, so, so in weird. the settings, you can you know turn iMessage Ooh, on uh, and off. You can send receipt, you get notifications, receipts, so yes. it will know if the iMessage actually went through. Uh, you also it also shows uh, typing notifications, which mm -hmm. is kind of neat. So when when you send me a message, I can see if you've picked it up and are starting to respond. It, something a to be creepy. aware of. Yeah, I, I spend creepy. at least eight minutes typing, curating every text message. You like message. to think about every message. I, I don't want it to say I'm typing a message. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the next feature. This is something Apple's been pushing really hard. It's newsstand. We haven't gotten to test it out yet. That's because it's not a thing not yet. really launched. No. Yeah. Uh, newsstand, I mean, it's in iOS 5. You have to buy the magazines in the App Store. You yeah. haven't done that yet. But it's a feature. If you want to read magazines, you can do yeah. that. It's a pretty minor feature. I, I'm not something I'm particularly excited about. One thing I am excited about is Reminders. Mm. Reminders is a new app. doesn't replace any other app. And it is for iPad, iPhone, and, and iPod Touch. What does it do? Yeah, so basically it's a task list. You know, if you need to go to the grocery store and pick up milk, stuff like that, it replaces those kinds of utilities, so tasks and remember the milk and that kind of okay. thing. Uh, so it kind of does what count. It's a combination of calendar and notes. Like instead of putting my Costco shopping list on notes, I have this reminders app to do it. Exactly. Uh, what I'm going to do is make a new. Actually, I have one here already. I, I made it on my iPad a while ago. Synced across through the magic of iCloud. Okay. Not really magic. It's just technology. And I'm going to tell the phone to remind me uh, when I leave the office because I want to make sure I don't leave the office without my keys while on the phone. Now, since the reminder is going to be on my phone. Mm -hmm. Probably this is a bad example. Right. But if you want to not forget to take something home from work or stop and pick something up on the way home, this is a great way to do it. Because mm -hmm. what you can do is tie it to your location and say, hey, when I leave my office. Be sure to bring the mace. You buzz me. Yeah. yeah. Let me know not to forget something. So, uh, and I'm going to say, when I leave the current location, which it's going to figure out because it knows where I am with GPS. OK. So this is only on the phone. Um, this is only on, well, only on the phone for the location stuff. Geolocation location. It's option. unclear to me exactly how that syncs across to the different devices yeah. uh, when you're, when you're, you know, all going across iCloud. Uh, and it's just going to say, it's going to make a buzz that pops up when I walk out of the office and get about 300, 400 yards from the current location when I set this up. You can also tie it to like your home address or something like that. 300, 400 yards. Wow. I mean, the GPS isn't perfectly accurate. I guess it, it, I, it can save you from you know it's, forgetting something super yeah. important, but you shouldn't rely on it. It's it, not like immediately out your door. It's more like it pulls every few minutes based on location. So okay. it may not be based on distance. It may be based on yeah. how often it checks in to see where you are. Right. Um, I It actually saved me a couple of times. I got it, it always buzzes before I get out of my neighborhood at home. Okay. So I can always turn around and go back and get what I've forgotten, mm. which is in Incredibly useful. All right, cool. Reminders. Twitter integration. Yeah, so this is actually uh, pretty unique for Apple. They have a partnership with Twitter, not yeah. Facebook, where it's in your settings menu. It'll ask you if you want to set up a Twitter account yeah. with iOS 5. And yeah, setting exactly that up yeah. means typing username, password, and also downloading the Twitter app. It's mm -hmm. just the same Twitter app that's been available on iOS for it's a right long here. time on the iPad Ooh. and the iPhone and the iPod Touch. So you download the app, mm -hmm. sign in, 
And basically, there's Twitter integration across a lot of low-level uh, A lot apps. of different apps. So yep. YouTube, Photos, Safari. Mm -hmm. Let's show you how this stuff works. All right. And you can also update your contacts. So people who've typed in their personal information in Twitter will tell you, will update it so uh, the contacts will know what their Twitter handle is. So this is a picture of Chloe that I took It's this adorable. Weekend. Look at how cute she is. She's laying on a blanket on the sofa looking happy. I'm going to tweet this because it's an awesome picture. And look, there's a menu right there. Right there. You can just automatically tweet it. It doesn't even launch the new uh, Twitter app. It just has a pop-up, and you can send a tweet. So same thing with Safari. If you're on a web page, you can share it on Twitter um, and other apps as well. I just tweeted awesome. just then, and it makes a little noise. That's um, a tweet noise. This also works in Safari as well. You can share links to articles you're watching. I hope there's nothing offensive up here. But if I want to let everybody know that I'm watching this is only, listening to this is only a test, I can tweet as well. I'm not going to do that right here, but it's the same UI for all the different, yep. different places it's supported. It's a very handy feature uh, if you're active on Twitter a lot. So the camera app is also updated. And the big new feature is that you can now take photos straight from your lock screen. So for example, if you have a passcode oh, for hand. your phone, uh, you can just double tap the home button and take a photo immediately. And if you take a photo, you actually can't uh, go back to the home screen, go back to your um, You can't see screen. anything else exactly. except for the photo you just took. Yep. So when I go to my home screen, it depends if, if the phone's locked. I use a lock on my phone because yep. of past history with Gary. Yep. Uh, I can't do anything else until I do that. That's really good. I'm going to type my password in right now. Okay, so now we're back in the phone. I'm going to launch the camera app. There's a few other small things that yeah. change. You're really excited about these, Norm. Well, in addition to actually just using the shutter button, you can actually take a photo with your volume buttons. So if you turn your phone over to the side, it's more like a camera. Now, the positioning of the camera, uh, the lens, is it might get in the way of where uh, you put your fingers for the volume button. So you have to hold it in the right way so you don't obscure the lens when using the There's volume buttons. There's a technique. Is there is a, definitely a technique. Uh, in addition, you can actually turn on uh, grid lines now. So you can use the rule of threes to take better photos. And you can also manually turn on HDR also in that options menu. So right there, HDR and the grid lines. Do you leave HDR on or off normally? I leave it on. Really? Now, uh, your photos also get synced to the photo stream. And if you have HDR on both those photos, we'll go up to the photo stream. You can't actually delete photos manually from the photo stream. So just We'll make talk sure. about that in a sec. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a sec. But that's what's new to the camera app um, with, iOS, uh, with iOS 5 and with the iPhone 4S. Obviously, the camera lens is actually better. Uh, so it'll take faster photos. Yes. So once you've shot your photos with mm -hmm. the new camera, you can go into the photo app and, and do And the photo app them. is just a little different. I mean, it looks mostly the same on the iPad. You Look, picked a photo. It's a picture I shot just a moment ago of Norman Chan that, mm -hmm. on my phone, and now it's on my iPad. I don't know how that works, but I think it's the internet. So uh, you can edit this photo on the iPad without using a third-party app. And you can do very basic editing. Enhance. Enhance. Uh, in, oh. Enhance. Uh, no, that just reverts it. So okay. there is an auto-enhance feature that uh, lets you, I guess, I guess, sharpens it just a little bit. You can rotate. Um, and you can remove crop. red eye. Do I have red eye? I don't have red eye. You can add red eye. And then the final option is to crop, and you can scale it, and you can oh, uh, you fix the aspect ratio. You can crop just to there. Look how fast that is. Eh, that's a decent crop, I guess. And then you can boom, say, cropped. Um, so it's not any fancy photo editing. It's not like magical future stuff. It's basically just really simple. Like here's the here are the things. Where did it go? It's gone. In my photos. There it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. Popped up. Super close up, Norman Chan. Uh, it's, this isn't going to replace Photoshop. No. This yeah. is just to do quick, quick and dirty so that you can post stuff to Twitter and Facebook yeah. and yeah. Flickr and stuff like that from your phone. But basically, with the crop, you should never zoom in with your iPhone yeah. when you take a photo because it's a, it's a digital zoom, not an optical zoom. Right. Take the full picture and then crop in using the new photos feature. Well, and the neat thing about all this stuff is assuming your, wi your iPad's connected to Wi-Fi and your phone's connected to Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. all of a sudden your iPad becomes a terminal for doing all this kind of stuff off of the small screen of your phone. You yeah. can use the big, big screen for that, which is pretty cool. The next thing that's changed is Safari. Yeah, uh, Safari is updated with a few new features, not complete overhaul, but a few features that users have been demanding for a long time. Gone is that page with all the thumbnails of all the different browsers mm -hmm. pages you have open. Here are now are tabs. I love tabs. So tab browsing. Uh, how many tabs can you open? You can open. You can open a whole bunch. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. I'm, I'm going to just keep. Tabbing. Oh my God! So many tabs. Okay, so one thing that the, uh, it looks like that's the, the max number. So that maybe is nine. It looks like yeah, nine. Just like how many thumbnails you would normally have. Exactly. Previously. Nothing's changed on that front. Uh, you do notice that there is a little bit of, uh, you know, not enough memory on the yeah. iPad sometimes when you're browsing using a bunch of different tabs. Mm -hmm. But the thing I really like is actually Reader. Um, yep. 
It's kind of like a poor man's Insta, Insta uh, paper. Insta paper, right. Yeah. So it's something readability was in Safari on the desktop. Now it has the same similar Look, feature everything on, on, the, uh, on the iPad. So yeah. there's an and iPhone. So it's just a button. It's really handy, actually, on the phone. You just hit that little reader button in the, in the URL. And it gives you like a box. pure text preview with the images in line. I like this. It doesn't cache it for offline viewing. So mm -hmm. you have to be connected for this to work. Uh, Instapaper has the big advantage there because it does work offline. It'll cache it on the yeah. phone. Uh, I think it's a neat feature. I don't think it's going to change the world. Yeah. But it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's Safari, much better on the phone. I mean, I couldn't notice it was much faster with iOS 5, but it's pretty much the same performance. Still really good. It really is just the it's a, tab browsing. It's a little, I ran Sun Spider. It's a little bit faster. It's not substantially faster. Not enough that you notice in the real world. Mm -hmm. So the last big enhancement, this is actually a pretty big deal, yeah. is the addition of iCloud. So iCloud is the fancy name for Apple's Cloud Sync service. You see Mobile Me. Kind of. It's obviously changed now. Yeah. It's free. And it's, it's free-ish. Free-ish for five you gigs of storage. You get five gigs of storage for free, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and you can you can do things like sync your camera roll across iOS devices, sync your photo stream. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff you can do as well. It'll sync settings between apps for apps that support yep. it, which is really, really handy for like save games and stuff like that, yeah. as well as documents in pages and, well, other supported apps. Right now, it's a relatively small list. But I assume that tomorrow, I mean today, when this is out, there will be a bunch more supported apps that, that do actually sync content. Yeah, so this is kind of part of their PC-free initiative where you can basically restore all your stuff to a new iOS device. Yeah. All, all, all your information, all your data that you normally have in iTunes is now in the cloud. So to set up initially, if you want to opt in iCloud, it's in the very first setup, right? You can just right. sign in. You might need an at me account, uh, at me.com account have, for you have, email. Yeah, so there are several services that require .me or me.com accounts for, for email is one. Uh, I think Notes is another one. Mm -hmm. yep. Everything else works. Uh, it seems like it's syncing my mail, even though I don't have a .me account or me.com account. Yeah, so you can configure it. You can say, I don't want to sync contacts, or I want to sync only you know, calendar right. and photos. And then, of course, it tells you, it gives you an estimate of how much space it will take, including the photos. Right. And they then give you an option to buy more space. So I actually went ahead and bought more space because I was running out. I don't need to buy more again. Uh, it's 20 bucks for 15 gigs for a year, mm -hmm. which seems like quite a bit, actually, for, yeah. compared to Dropbox and Amazon, yeah. some of the other places that do this. Uh, the uh, you can manage the the storage that you use. Most of it is in backups. The big advantage here is backing up your phone to mm -hmm. iCloud instead of to a particular device. This is a very good thing. Uh, although I don't think it's that necessary now that they've added Wi-Fi sync yeah. to iOS and iTunes. So so if you have a computer that stays on all the time in your house, you can just sync Leave every time iTunes you plug on. plug the device into the into the wall mm -hmm. and it's locked. It'll sync automatically. Yep, including the backup. Yep. So you know, think about how you're going to use that. Like the way I see people, most people using iCloud is to uh, sync applications and files and stuff like that, and then do backups locally still because it makes more sense because the backups are two to three gigs each, uh, even without music and, and other files on them. So that's pretty much iOS five. That's the high points. There's a bunch of other little stuff you can yeah. sync over Wi-Fi now. That's really mail has changed a little bit. Uh, you can actually set up the whole device without ever plugging into a PC. Yep. Uh, well, you have to. Let's take that back. You have to actually install the update using a PC, and then after that, you never have to yes. yeah, plug it if in. If you want to upgrade, again. right, your iPhone 4S will come with yeah. it. But iPhone 4, if you want to upgrade, you still have to plug that in. Yeah, of course. Uh, other things that happen, incremental updates. So you shouldn't have to plug the device into the computer to update the OS ever again. You want to download the full like 400 meg file. Right. It'll just be the incremental change. Right. Uh, and then, of course, the install process. So let's talk about it's gonna. It's a really easy install process. It's gonna walk you through the whole thing. It's gonna ask you to connect to Wi-Fi. It's gonna ask if you want to use iCloud. Mm -hmm. uh, I quite kind of like iCloud, but I don't recommend using it for backups. I recommend still syncing to the to the Mac for backups. I think it's much easier and more cost effective. Now we do have a guide on the site for how to properly upgrade to iOS yeah. five from your current device. So make sure to read that. That's probably what you're gonna do next. I think it's a no-brainer upgrade for people with iPhone fours. Yeah. I, I don't know about three GS just yet because we haven't test performance. I don't have a 3GS to test with anymore. Everybody's yeah. using those. It seems but if you have like, an iPhone so. 4, even if you don't want the iCloud features, or you know, you can disable notifications. No, notifications is the thing you want right. for. Exactly. Very clearly. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. Do we forget that's anything? It. No, that's it. iOS 5, it's out today. Yeah, it's free. It's a free upgrade. It's pretty cool. You should download it if you own an iOS device. Yep. Uh, for test time, Will. I'm Norm. See you guys next time. Bye.